case as a result of this in the building. Um, there was partial collapse of the stairway. The details about this are more difficult, um, but I'll get to the evacuation story. Ultimately, what happened here is that the people came down from the upper levels to level nine. They were able to come down that way on their own. At that point, the stairways were blocked. They were not able to access them. There was a convenient stair, which went from level nine to level eight, that had been blocked up temporarily as a result of the previous earthquake. There, were, there was a builder there. He opened up that stairway. The people then went down to eight. And in the meantime, the fire service took them, it appears to be about two hours, to find their way up through the damaged stairway below and lead them out. They only took the people out one at a time, and there was failure of what we believe was a sprinkler system in that area, and so they were walking out from eight down through cascading water the whole time. So you uh, talk to some of the people or get their accounts in the media, and it was a pretty horrific experience coming down through this cascading water. There was a lot of dust around. Um, the central city was covered in dust, and for a long time they had visibility issues within there. Although they didn't completely lose visibility, it was impaired. The other building is a hotel. It's got nine levels of car parking at this point. Um, it's, uh, then there's 15 levels of guest room. Because of the time of day, there were not many hotel guests in there. The problem with this, by the time we got human ethics um, permission to go through the survey and everything, um, we were unable to get a hold of all but one, or sorry, but only one person in this building. The business is done, the people have moved on, you call the company and there's one person in the office. And so we haven't been able to get a hold of the people in the building, unfortunately. Um, there were, but there were no major injuries or fatalities as far as we know. Uh, there was partial collapse of both stairways in the building, um, although there was evacuation by crane and some people were able to make their way down um, through the building. This adjacent car park did not suffer any major structural damage, at least not um, in terms of compromising the stairway. So the people were able to move from this building into the adjacent car park. When we went into the building, we were able to go up through this car park and then make foyers a level at a time into the building to see what the damage was. This happens to be that building. This was a restaurant area unoccupied at the time, or at least believed to be unoccupied. There was no food found on the tables, but although it was set up for a meal, in terms of the plates out and silverware and wine glasses and the like, there was no food found. So we would have expected there to have been some evidence, even if they, at the point we were in there, they had not cleaned it out or cleaned it up. And so as far as we know, there was no one in there, at least not, um, occupying the restaurant as a user, if you will. Now, this guy here is tall. All right, he's over, you know, he's probably uh, 1.9 to 2 meters tall. Um, but he has to crouch within that space. And the reason he's crouching is, is that you've collapsed the top half of this column. Um, when you're in this sort of building, you know, you know, you don't really see these pictures in textbooks. When you're standing there looking at it from a personal point of view, it's very unsettling. Um, when you've lost what is about 400 millimeters off of the height of the floor in this case. Um, this happens, to, th there's a set of egress doors here, um, and you can see you crush the doors, and it would, had it been occupied, had some effect on the egress of these occupants. Um, I, okay. Um, this is the sort of thing you find in the stairways. You've got the <coughs> occupants coming down, and the upper floors are completely collapsed. In this case, you're not going to go any further. Um, in these. Uh, other problems with egress, this door had to be effectively forced open. It's off its hinges down here. And these are the gypsum wall board that has come in on both sides. Uh, from outside, it's this sort of, um, you know, um, impairment to getting out, which affects the people. What we ultimately did is we surveyed anybody we can get to respond. We contacted the companies sent out a letter inviting people to participate in the questionnaire. We've gotten a total of 74 people who have responded. Um, we've gotten one person out of the hotel. This data is for the other two office buildings that I've talked about. Uh, we looked at where the people were, um, which in the interest of time is not necessarily all that important. Um, 
you, then it was where were you located in the building at the time? The vast majority of the people were in their offices um, at the time. The, some of the questions we asked, and more of this is covered in the paper, is the action you did immediately upon the shaking stopping. What sort of things did they do? And you can see overwhelmingly, in this case, the first thing they did is that they started to talk to others to get more information about what had happened. Um, and then there's a number of other things that are in here. Some people contacted family and friends, um, and so on, in terms of what the occupants did. Um, and where were you locating the bill? Oh, sorry, I went the wrong way. Um, and then once you became aware that the second stairway had collapsed, what did you do? And you've got the majority of the people said, well, they just effectively realized there was nothing they could do, and they awaited rescue. Um, some people here waited for instructions, attempted to contact the police. Cellular networks were not really available. They were overloaded, although many people could get texts in to get phone calls across was rather difficult. The call center had been transferred to another location, and so this um, became rather difficult. And then um, the people either were waiting for rescue or awaiting instruction. Um, how ultimately did the people leave the building? Most of them out of this one particular building, which is the one that I said they went out by crane, the first one I talked about, the Forsyth Bar building. Um, an awful lot of them left by cr crane. The others, there's another one in here where they ended up abseiling out the window. Again, that was out of that one building. Um, 11 people, at least. As far as we know from the media, it sounded like about 15 people evacuated by abseiling from the building. Um, the others came down the damaged stairs. That's um, primarily from the building where, where they were able to evac evacuate. And then the one thing that really sort of interests me is how anxious did you feel about the building in terms of it? Did you feel that it was on the verge of collapse? Was that a concern? Um, my guess is it appears that this correlates very well with age. There were a large number of people that were anxious about their building collapsing. Um, some believe that they, it could collapse at any time. This is any time, anxious about it, and then not too concerned about the building. And the other th question that we asked was, how did you feel um, about the others? What did you think about the people around you? How did they feel? And the one thing that I thought was interesting, although we didn't specifically ask the question, three people felt that they were more concerned about a fire starting somewhere else in the building. They weren't worried about the building itself. They were worried about a fire and them not being able to evacuate in that particular case. What did we come out with? Well, it's going to take some time for the city to recover, obviously, both physically and emotionally. They've now, they're in the process of tearing down 800, or, sorry, 900 buildings out of the Central Business District. But when confronted with a horrific challenge, people came together the, and worked toward a common goal. There were no reports at all of any non-adaptive or panic behavior on the account of the occupants. Um, although it appears that the structure within companies, in terms of management and subordinates, seem to stay in effect. Management managers seem to continue to look after their employees. Employees who were in that role of you know, support staff and the like were happy for the management to look after them, so to speak, um, in the building. Comments in the survey were universally positive about everybody's actions. Although they said a number of people, there was a wide range in terms of anxiety level and people's responses, people were positive about the way their coworkers responded. So anyway, I think I'll leave it at that point. Okay. Thank you very much. Do you have any questions? One kind of slightly related question. I saw a photograph somebody took from the Fort Hills over the city just immediately afterwards. Yeah. There's a massive pall of dust. A huge amount of dust. Yeah. Did that have much of an effect on people? Uh, people talk about the initial loss of them. The visibility was not enough that they didn't have, I don't know what they had, but they seemed to have quite quite a bit. But people talked about that dust and seeing it coming toward them yeah. and that sort of thing. And it was, I mean, a lot of unreinforced masonry as well as the two buildings that collapsed, especially the one 
would have thrown up a great deal of Any health problems showing up like after World Trade on that class? Not that they haven't discussed it yet, but I think